Hey everyone. So, as you can see from the thumbnail, we got some jury trial verdicts to talk about. But maybe not just the ones you're thinking of. I mean, yeah, sure, you know, people watch me because I'm a gun guy, so we're going to talk about Kyle. The Rittenhouse verdict, it's in. Some of you happy about it, some of you not. A lot of, uh, a lot of division. My position on the matter really hasn't changed a whole bunch since this whole affair started. From the beginning, I've been saying that I thought Kyle was a shitty kid. Still think he probably is. That I thought the case was shaky and that there was a good chance he would be acquitted. Turns out he was. And I also said from the beginning that I would accept the verdict, that it could have gone either way. And I do, you know, um, the verdict is the verdict and we're not changing that anytime soon. Whether or not you think it's the right verdict, well, that's, that's for you to think about. But the real key thing here is that He's just a sh like a shitty kid, right? Like a lot of us were shitty kids, but we were raised out of it. There's a real problem in this country with people growing up, feeling like they can just do whatever they want and the rules don't apply and not thinking ahead to the ramifications of their actions. Not thinking ahead to the ramifications of their actions is one of the reasons that we normally don't or shouldn't charge minors with felonies because their brains aren't fully developed. That's something that also has been on my mind during this trial. He was only 17. Now, real key thing here, if you're the kind of person who only brings up a fact like this when the defendant looks like Kyle, you're part of the problem. I think the one thing this trial actually did for this country, no matter where you are on the political spectrum, is it really brought to light the abysmal nature of criminal law, of the, the criminal justice process, of the legal system, uh, not in the ways that everyone understands. Uh, it's really worth pointing out that every day in this country, kids who are not adults are found guilty of felonies for much smaller shit, fighting with a teacher, shoplifting, you name it. And they're mostly kids who don't have the benefits and privileges of legal counsel and public exposure and looking like a cleaned up white kid in the defendant's chair. Uh, if you take away anything from this process, take away and remember that, that they don't all have sympathetic judges. <laughs> My friend Perry the Mouse, what did she say on, on Twitter? If the judge had been trying any harder to get him off, this whole court case would have been streamed on Pornhub. Um, that is not the norm. The norm is quite opposite. You know, the fact that America now just barely is starting to talk about and understand this is important. I mean, this trial didn't reach like Duke lacrosse levels of prosecutorial misconduct, but it was a shit show. It was a mess and the results are the results we got. We, we deserve the legal system we have, who knows. If you want to dig more into the actual details of everything, uh, Devin from Legal Eagle, a YouTuber who I've recommended before and is wonderful, uh, he has a video up much longer than this one all about this. Uh, I'll link it down below, of course. And, you know, it's a terrific walkthrough. It's the fact that state laws vary from place to place about what self-defense is justified and what isn't. Wisconsin law is particularly broad, he points out. So yeah, there's a lot of really good legal analysis he gets into across the board, uh, including the fact that, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse is not the only one with a firearm out there, and other people could have very reasonably, because reasonable belief was part of the issue with this trial, right, could have reasonably believed he was an active shooter. And if someone like Grosskreutz, uh, who was also armed, if he had shot and killed Kyle Rittenhouse, would Grosskreutz be on trial? Would he have the same result? Would that shooting be justified? Uh, there's a lot of questions that we have to grapple with as people in the firearms community, and that is among them. So yeah, I'm, I'm just, there's plenty of disgust to go around with this entire trial, the whole process of it, and plenty of contempt and disgust that we should all have for many of the voices in the gun community. Uh, there are plenty of people who are just tr much like politicians now and right-wing media hosts are just tripping over themselves to try to praise this kid as a hero and a saint. There's a lot of voices in the firearms world who are of the he did nothing wrong camp. Um, whether he did anything criminally, legally wrong, I mean, that was the matter for the jury to handle, but as responsible firearm folk, like, yeah, he did fucking loads wrong. And it is important that we talk about this, right? It's important to recognize that he didn't seem to have any real de-escalation training. He didn't have, as far as I know, any less lethal tools on him. He didn't have pepper spray or anything else. He went into a volatile situation with only a firearm that he was openly carrying, I, I would say, frankly, brandishing. We'll talk about that later if you want. And he bears a ton of responsibility for what happened. 
were not for his presence there, this may not have all happened. But as again, as Devin points out, that's legally tricky under the law. You can't convict someone under, under that, especially under Wisconsin law. So fundamentally, my takeaway from the beginning hasn't changed, that Kyle Rittenhouse looked like a pretty shitty kid. And because of this acquittal uh, and everyone fawning all over him now, I don't know if he's ever going to grow out of that. Maybe he's going to just grow into a shitty adult. We've got plenty of them out there walking the streets and we run into them every day. And it's unfortunate, right? Because, like, I was a middle-class white kid. I grew up with privilege that he had. I grew up with fucking guns. I've been, I've had guns in my hand since I was single digits, right? And I can, I distinctly remember the whole idea, like when you're a little kid, you, you learn pretty early on in this world to like fear others, like the, oh, bad guys, gotta get the bad, go away bad guys. I remember on like Halloween one year, like mischief night, uh, you know, when kids would, I don't know if you had this in your town, like kids would throw eggs and toilet paper and bust up pumpkins. I wanted to sit on the roof of our garage with a little rifle because I was like going to defend the property, you know? I, like, I was that little vigilante kid, but here's the thing, I was 11, and I didn't do it because my parents said, no, there's no freaking way in hell you're doing that, idiot, and then they raised me right, and I grew out of it because I learned a lot of pro-social behaviors. Rittenhouse, I mean, you know, we saw this with his social media that got exposed and everything and filtered through with this moment he was identified. Like, he's clearly just had a head really filled with garbage from a young age, and it's heartbreaking because a lot of kids are in that position. So yeah, hooray for me, aren't I lucky? I had better parents and better peers than he did and than a lot of kids in this world. But I don't wanna make this about one specific trial and one verdict, because there's a lot going on in this country right now. And I've got, I've got some predictions for you. I've got, we'll call it six predictions for you right now on what this and other trials are going to mean for the future, uh, especially with regard to firearms and safety of our communities. All right, prediction one, there will be more violence because specifically because of this trial. There was, you know, increasing political violence in certain ways. Uh, the country is getting much safer, but politics is getting much more bloody. Uh, and this trial is going to be a continuation of that. As, as people have said, expect to see the mayonnaise militia showing up at more protests and events and generally just bringing firearms and, and a heavy handed presence around. That includes just dumb truck nuts fuck faces and that includes specifically Nazis and fascists and others who are bent on more violence. They are seeing this and they're openly talking on social media, not even hiding it right now, that they see this as a green light and a thumbs up to go out and shoot more of the Antifas. And it's going to happen. It's, there's going to be more shootings because people are seeing this as carte blanche. Prediction two. When this violence happens, and remember it's happening, we will not see a whole slew of acquittals following along, though. Uh, this was our one shot. This is the, the one that goes down in the history books as the trial that, you know, everyone remembers. But other people in future, for a lot of different reasons, will not probably get off when the violence comes. Um, there were, this was an alignment of the stars. This was a state that had particularly broad self-defense laws. It was a prosecution that did a particularly bad job. It's going to be harder to even find juries in the future who don't remember this trial and don't have every th very heavy feelings about this trial and a sense that we have to self-correct away from violence in future cases, even if those cases are also shaky, right? We're going to see a lot of people who feel emboldened committing acts of violence, but they're not going to have all these extra little details. They're gonna be doing it in different jurisdictions, they're gonna be doing it under different circumstances, and in a, in a climate politically that is not ready to keep acquitting killers in the street. And we've seen that from thankfully other court cases recently. Prediction three. This is, a, this is a more specific one, so get ready for me to be wrong. But I'm going to say there's a chance we're going to see clarification under the law, at least at the state level and other areas, of brandishing versus open carrying. Um, if you have a pistol on your hip, that's, you know, it's outside the waistband holster or a drop leg holster or something, that's open carrying and that's legal in many areas. It was legal in Wisconsin. If you unholster that pistol and start walking around with it in your hand, you're no longer open carrying it. You are brandishing, and that's a crime, and that is also cause for other people to intercede. With rifles, especially long guns that are slung, like chest rigs, it's a lot shakier. 
I would be willing to say, and the reason, uh, my understanding, watch Devin, he'll clarify, right? But the reason that Kyle was found not guilty of some of the charges was because they weren't in furtherance of or during commission of other crimes. The judge threw out the one firearm crime, again, for obscure but possibly legally sound reasons. Uh, but I would argue that he was committing a crime. He was committing the crime of brandishing his rifle. When you're running down the road, if you just have it slung, like, that's a open carried rifle, sure. Once you start putting hands on that rifle, especially around <laughs> the, the manual of arms and the trigger group, I would say you're brandishing at that point. Maybe we're going to see some clarity under the law and we will not have quite so much liberty to just walk, you have people walking around. If they have a chest rig rifle, maybe it's not gonna be permitted in the public and thought of as mere open carry. Watch for that one in future. Because remember, you can't defend legally from a peril that you yourself could create. And that was at issue here. Did Kyle create his own peril by being there? Well, the, the court said no. Did Kyle create his own peril by, in my opinion, brandishing his rifle? That's, that's an interesting question. We didn't see that answer to this trial. Prediction four, sort of unrelated to the firearms uh, and murder trials and stuff, but well, I mean, it is a murder trial that's gonna eventually happen because of this asshole who drove a truck through the parade, right? We might, I predict, finally see vehicle-borne threats taken more seriously at parades and protests. Uh, for those of you who don't know, for years we have had this problem, uh, especially up here in the Northwest, in Seattle and Portland, where police have repeatedly interfered with and undermined and even arrested drivers of blocker vehicles. If you're not familiar with this tactic, it's well known and it's very wise. Anytime a protest or parade or march or anything of the sort brings people onto you know, street roads, tra traffic roads, uh, you use blocker vehicles, you use plug cars, right? So at the front of the march and especially at the back of the march, you have vehicles that, that plug the road. They drive in parallel very slowly and they have a good standoff distance from the people so that cars can't ram through the crowd. Uh, this was a tactic learned early on because people have been using vehicle attacks, especially the fascists and Nazis have been doing this for a bit. And it was a great defense against it. And then the police started pulling drivers over for driving too slowly or slashing their tires or ripping them out of the cars and saying, you're, you're, you're harming people with your vehicle. You might be trying to drive into the crowd. And like, no, I belong here. I was hired by this group. So maybe because it was nice white grandmas who got run down this time, maybe we'll finally see vehicle protections at marches permitted. I'd like to see it. Jury's out on that one. Prediction five. This is the easiest prediction of all to make. Gun sales are gonna keep going up. More people are gonna to choose to arm themselves. More people think the world is becoming more dangerous, even though it's, you know, it is becoming safer all the time for most folk. But that's the thing, right? We're gonna keep seeing that over and over. If you're going shopping, now is the time to go shopping. What's my old adage? Lawyer, locksmith, passport, gun. Those are the four things that you should be acquiring before you need one. Right? You do your search, your research, you do your shopping, you do, you do all the paperwork and you get everything lined up before you're at a point where you're like, oh crap, I really need to get X. Yeah, you, you should have gotten one months ago if that's the case. And it's not just getting firearms, it's getting firearm training, right? It's building communities, learn from one another. It is not just people on the right. I mean, all, don't just worry about the Nazis and fascists, right? It, if you're someone who is an underrepresented minority, if you're from any marginalized groups, there is community out there. There are people out there who will train you. There are people out there who to provide great education. Uh, look, to, you know, follow armed margins. Look for armed equality. Uh, the Yellow Peril Tactical Tiger Block, right? So yeah, like right here in the Pacific Northwest, we got the South River Group and others like them. John Brown Gun Clubs around the country. If you're a little more mainstream, sure, you got the Liberal Gun Club. You can check them out. But just because you find yourself not on the reactionary racist side of things, it doesn't mean that guns aren't for you. It just means you gotta find your right community. And that is my fifth prediction. Those communities are gonna keep growing. And my sixth prediction, or at the very least, my sixth point of looking forward into the future is we've gotta celebrate the wins where we get them. We don't get hyper-focused on one trial, one instance, one awful thing that happened. You've gotta find the other things going on that give you hope and inspiration. Uh, it may not be justice, you know, they said ju it wasn't justice for George Floyd with his verdict. Justice would have been still being alive. The same could be said for Ahmaud Arbery. But if you haven't seen, like that verdict just came down today as I'm filming this, right? So the McMichaels, uh, William Bryan Jr., they're all guilty, right? Multiple felonies, multiple murder charges going away forever.
It got a little bit overshadowed by some of this other news lately from the other verdicts, but if you hadn't followed the Integrity First for America trial, this was all the victims from Charlottesville, the Unite the Right rally, their verdicts all came down. The verdict was bananas amazing. All, again, the leaders of Identity Europa and other assorted Nazis and fascists, all guilty across the board on almost every charge. Millions at this point, millions in damages coming down. There are people who are going to have liens on their houses. There are people who are gonna be wiped out financially. And this is how we win. If you're not following any of that news, by the way, so you've got Molly Conger, who's been doing reporting from the beginning in Charlottesville. Uh, you have the Unicorn Riot crowd who've been, you know, live streaming the whole thing, just constant updates. You have Emily Gorchansky, if you don't know her. I mean, again, links all down in the description to some of their coverage of this. These are wins that we need to be focused on because that is the path forward. Again, in the news just out in Colorado, right? What was it? The federal judge handed down, again, hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines to a couple of lawyers who have been involved in one of the big lie lawsuits over the election, hitting people in their wallets. We understand this. Deplatforming works, right? Defunding and deplatforming and these small wins. The January 6th rioters, we're seeing, again, just seeing verdict after verdict. Every one of those folk has taken a fucking huge L and they're all gonna go sit in the clink. And there's still ongoing investigations as to who knew what in the White House and in Congress at the time. So yeah, defunding and deplatforming works. Whether it's small time, just getting your local Nazi fired from their job at Boeing or whatever, or whether it's whole organizations being brought to court and sued out of existence. This is how we win. This is how communities come together. And this is the organizing that has to keep happening. So that's what I got for you, right? We can have big feels over certain individual court cases and trials, but don't lose sight of the big picture. Uh, what is the phrase? The arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. I believe that was Theodore Parker. And that's what we're seeing. So keep your eyes on the prize and keep your sights on one another. Keep each other safe. Have a good holiday. Uh, if you're around the Thanksgiving table, you know, feel free to tell your bumbling uncle or something that, Yes, the retail theft is catching, you know, the freaking news cycle, but wage theft and employer theft from, from regular people is oodles of magnitudes worse than any freaking stealing shit from Nordstrom's or Louis Vuitton or whatever the hell that shit was. So yeah, once you're a few too many whiskeys in around the Thanksgiving table, have that discussion. Start fighting that misinformation and lie. In general, though, yeah, that's, that's all I got for you. Those are my thoughts. I don't know if you need them, but I'm telling you here because some of you like to listen to me. Watch out for one another. We got a lot more coming down the pike at us, but as long as we celebrate the wins when we can and, and keep our eyes on our flanks when we're not, that's how we all get through this. So be good to one another. We are the ones who protect us. Have a good holiday. Stay safe out there.